Hello and welcome. I'm Craig Waters, editor of Global Railway Review, and joining me today on this video is Johan Berin, founder and designer at Green Furniture Concept, a Scandinavian design company that makes sustainable modular solutions for public interior spaces. Johan, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Craig. Really nice to be here and to talk about uh, uh, living station environments. Excellent. So, um, Johan, I wanted to um, speak with you about the importance of train station interior design um, and how this plays a part in the journey experience for rail passengers, but also um, about sustainable design, which I know Green Furniture Concept is, of course, working towards um, to boost the standard of public space interiors. So for train stations specifically, I think people are now more than ever considering a train station to be more than just the start or end of a journey. So I guess with, with that in mind, the um, first impression for train station visitors is really important and it goes a long way. So why do you think first impressions at stations are so important? Well, coming to a station, uh, maybe your first encounter with a city, uh, and we had the, we had this recently uh, by a station in Germany, Coburg, for example, uh, where where the mayor really in, involved in making the station environment great and reflecting the feelings uh, and um, the goals and uh, the sustainable thoughts of the city. So so it's really a shop window to the city coming in there, and as you say, it's an increasingly uh, important part traveling so the the waiting in the station where you may change from a bus to a train or change trains uh, wait for your train is such an important part of the journey and and if it's a nice and natural part that time will feel uh, long and and it can be even useful and uh, de-stressing really if people come into a nice environment They'll sink down, they'll lower their pace, their, uh, their rhythm, uh, lower their stress level, uh, sit down and realize that they're a little bit hungry and, and they'll walk over and have a sandwich and a coffee and, uh, and have a good time. And that's also good business to the stations. So I think it's, it has many importances really to the traveler, uh, to the station itself, uh, to the, the shop window of trains as a means of travel. Um, um, and to the business of the station. Yeah, great. I, I completely agree. So, so when it comes to the overall station experience for people, um, how does placemaking play a part? So placemaking, I understand, um, is turning a public space from one that you can't wait to transit through to one that makes you really want to stay in longer. Um, so in terms of placemaking of seating at stations, um, how is this decided and how does it change how a station operates? Yes, so placemaking is about involving people, making an image in people's minds of that station so they can think back and make it memorable think back and see oh yes the station i know how it's uh, fitted i can sit over there um, i know there's good coffee um, uh, and uh, it's a part of my daily life um, uh, making that place and and to do so what is so you to use place making furniture to build a place you uh, you need to work with uh, identity. It's like branding if you want, but also the branding needs to be nice. It needs to provide a nice place where people want to be. Um, and, and there, the placemaking furniture uses nature as we do it, uh, biophilic design it's called, uh, using designing like nature, uh, using natural materials, using, using natural shapes uh, and having a playfulness and a variety, uh, meandering, um, using natural shapes, as you see behind me here, um, the meandering benches, but also trees with acoustics, good acoustics, providing that, uh, that nice environment. So uh, a place where people want to be, at, and that is unique enough and stands out to be their place and be memorable. Excellent. And, um... I guess, um, in your experience, Johan, um, different countries, um, do they have different requirements for their station seating? Um, or perhaps, you know, 
different requirements for stations, even on the same network. Um, I guess every station is different. What do you think? Yes, I think uh, every country will think they have very different demands, but but uh, boiling it all down, I think they are all very similar. Um, they they want to be efficient, they want to be inclusive, and they want to have places um, uh, for all uh, and in enough places um, to sit down. And, and what they are now realizing is also that they can make something nice about that. As the maintenance and the efficiency has been very, very important, and still is uh, very important um, to, to uh, not have vandalism, to have something that can withstand the wear and tear over many, many years. And that's important, of course. And, and they haven't thought that would be possible to combine with a nice place. So, so what was there before we came in, what was there before placemaking furniture for station environments um, is pure function. It's a seat on a beam, um, very often in metal, very often gray, um, maybe a color, but you know, uh, it's still something hard uh, by shape, uh, by material, and, and that will be very cool to sit on. Um, so, so that is what has been there before. And, and really what made it possible for us to do placemaking seating for station environments was to, to find how we found a way of using natural materials like wood um, in a way that is easily maintainable. So it can stay in shape like new over time, also in a station environment. So nice and efficient. Um, so that has really been the key. And, and that is the requirement wherever you go. Uh, we actually last week uh, made a pilot installation at uh, Bangalore station, Bengaluru in India. Um, and, and you may think that this would be one of the most different places to London, for example. Um, but, but really, and, and maybe it has been, but the ambition to the way the direction they are going is the same, really. So, so providing a nice environment, making people slow down a little bit, having enough seats, uh, making the, the businesses thrive uh, within and around the station, making uh, a hub for traveling that is a nice part of people's daily life and that is perceived as a short waiting time and an agreeable waiting time and a place where you can meet a friend. Um, so, so coming down to that it's all very similar i think uh then there may be you know a little bit of dimensions here and there for for uh, elderly seating seating for for older people um uh, for for uh, uh reduced mobility um, and, and things like that but but they're all very very similar and here we see a big development i think in in inclusion um and maybe yeah we we I think we will come back to that. But but really, the requirements from different countries, they they are very similar. And then going to different networks, yes, there is a branding, uh, a wanting of having their own brand, showing their own brand. Uh, but there is also um, a need uh, and an understanding of providing a place where people can navigate. They know their place of, around, they can recognize that, oh yes, there is PRM seating, it has another look, it works like this. Um, uh, so, so um, for example, Swedish railways have been very keen on this, um, rolling out a system that is recognizable all over the railways of uh, Sweden with a color difference from different regions, uh, from different eras of the station, uh, with a, a variant of how you use the, the actual building, but with the same system that is recognizable and also place making a nice, uh, providing that, that nice part of the journey. Um, so I think that it's very, very similar. Uh, it comes down to branding a little bit uh, and, and then uh, materials, shapes of how the building is used, uh, colors is, is often uh, fully enough to, to show that brand and make a special place out of that particular station or that particular line. 
Okay, great. And that's um, really interesting. And um, I look forward to learning more about your pilot um, at Bangalore that you mentioned. Um, but also, um, you, you, you mentioned about making these places hubs um, and for people to actually come to and, and make the most of their journeys, which I think is really important as well. And um, Johan, you, you also mentioned about uh, making these places um, inclusive. Um, so I think inclusion is um, an increasingly important topic. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about how a place um, for all can be created? Um, what does that mean um, and how, how does it come about? Yes. So the requirements around countries uh, are for to, to have PRM seats, if you want, uh, seats for, for uh, persons with restricted mobility. Um, and so, so I think that is generally applied. What happens now is you really want to make a place for all and you want to listen to your community as such and invite your community. And that is far more than just having a corner that is PRM. So, so uh, what we're looking at now, and in, in discussion also with uh, the National Rail Ambassador for, for Accessibility, um, which is really nice. We've learned a lot uh, the last time uh, only there. Providing, yes, the traditional PRM seats that are labeled so people with a poor sight can, can see them and find them, but also having the same type of site of, of seating uh, on, in other places around the station that are higher double arms, uh, accessible like that, but not labeled. Not everybody that, that uh, um, has a trouble standing up wants to be labeled like that. So, um, so, so that is very important. Spread around, have a variety uh, when it comes to accessibility like that, but also having different, a variety overall, I mean, um, seating facing outwards, inwards, to sit together, to sit alone, um, to sit in a quiet space, to sit in the flow, um, to be able to eat, to be able to work, um, to fit uh, a children's buggy, to fit your luggage, um, to fit a wheelchair, to fit a wheelchair in the end of the seating where there is also charging that can be reached from the wheelchair. Um, they are also contrast colors, so to, to have arms of a contrast color, so they're clearly visible. Contrast color on the, on the charging, so you can really clearly see that there is charging. All these things are, are, are developing very quickly, and there is a, a huge demand for this. And, and um, I think there is much to learn also for the rail operators and, and the station managers um, to go from that PRM corner to an all-inclusive space uh, where everybody, where there's a seat for all. So, so really important. And, and there is, we're building expertise in this together with uh, the, the ambassador uh, in UK, for example, then the rail ambassador, which is uh, really nice and, and uh, such a, an important part of building a place um, that is enjoyable for everyone. Also, Pride colors in this is, is uh, an important statement, I think, uh, and a possibility to, to use. So uh, showing that we care for all as a station Absolutely. and a rail operator. Absolutely, lots to consider. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting to hear all of that from you. There's, there's so much to consider when, when thinking about seating and, and making it all um, inclusive for everyone. So, um, so that's great to hear. Um, mm. And um, finally, Johan, um, seating areas um, at stations must of course be pleasant and comfortable areas um, as you've mentioned um, but I think people are also more aware than ever of materials around them that are eco-friendly and sustainable um, and of course there are ambitions in the rail industry to um, create an even cleaner and greener railway and the stations um, play a part in that also. So um, why do you think it is important for stations to be eco-friendly and green environments? Yeah, so it's a general movement in society, which is which I love really. Uh, and rail is then the most sustainable means of travel. Uh, and the stations are the shop window to that. Uh, means of travel. So, so really, uh, how the stations are designed and what encounters people the their first encounter with the rail and the station 
is really important uh, and a possibility of showing that sustainability and all the nice things that you do for sustainability, electrifying the rails, putting solar cells on the roof, good water management and everything, uh, may not uh, always be visible to the travelers. Uh, but, but the station and the furniture in the station, it's like the clothes that the, the operator wears. It's what's visible and if that communicates sustainability, um, people will feel good about that. It's also a, a factor in the feel good. And, and speaking then about what we do for sustainability as green furniture, uh, we work circularly, meaning we use circular materials, natural materials, part of a natural circle, wood and wool, um, and technical materials like steel and plastic that are recycled and can be recycled again. So ocean plastics, for example, for the little plastic that we use, the little glider on the floor, um, uh, post-consumer plastic recycled can be recycled again. And the steel legs that you see behind me there also, recycled steel that can be recycled again. And also then going further from the material, the design needs to be circular. So, and that, this means you need to be able to shift parts where the, where that is needed, you need to have an easy maintenance scheme to keep it as new over time. You need to have a design that is timeless. So you want to keep it for a long time, uh, which I think we have proven by installing um, uh, this type of seating around different eras of stations from the, the late 18, uh, 18, uh, the 19th century, 1869, something like that. And up and on every decade, up to very, very modern stations like the one you see behind me. Um, and, uh, and proving timelessness. So you want to keep it. You should be able to keep it, should be durable to keep it. And also you should be able to, sh to uh, shift with the use of the station. So modularity uh, and an, an ability to, to reconfigure to uh, a different use. During the pandemic, for example, introducing uh, social distancing dividers uh, be between the, the seating. It's a typical that example of that type of change over time. Um, and so, so that's material circular, uh, that's design circular, and then to the business model circular. So um, we offer a, a function rental, which I think is the long term. It's this, this is where the the world is moving in this uh, direction. So total flexibility, you rent it as long as you want. When you don't need it or you want something else, we take it back and we use it somewhere else. Um, that's function rental. But not everybody uh, are open to that yet. You may have a budget to spend or you don't have anything to spend for rental. So when we sell furniture, which is the most common case still, um, we also offer a buyback because that furniture is valuable to us if you don't want it anymore. So if it's the, the need of a station, for example, here in Sweden and Halmstad station, they had an increased flow. They wanted to take back a big circle uh, and have a smaller one. So we bought back the big circle and introduced a smaller one. And that big circle, we take back and use the parts and put into new. So all the new furniture that we sell will contain a little bit of old parts. Um, it adds to the story. They will also have the same 15 year warranty as, uh, as the rest of the furniture and those parts and, and showing that it's the design and the materials are durable enough to go along also with a buyback, also with a long warranty. So, so I think uh, it's, a very, it's a very nice system to work with and, and showing the flexibility over time and showing the durability and a reuse like that. So circularity all the way, even to the business model. So, so that's really important. Absolutely. That sounds um, really great. And something that I didn't realize um, was happening. So that's really good to, to learn all about that. So um, thank you. Um, Johan, um, sadly, that's all the time that we have for today. Um, thank you for joining me. I think um, passenger demands are changing all the time, but um, train stations are such a key element of a journey. Um, so it's really great to hear what you have to say on improving these areas and, um, and how this contributes to um, the overall passenger experience. So thank you very much.
Thank you, Craig. Really nice to talk to you. And thanks also to our viewers um, out there and for our Global Railway Review readers. Um, please keep your eyes peeled for more videos in the future. So thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.